Welcome to the OFC NAS. In whichever way you're joining us today, we are so glad that you're here. We are so grateful that we have the ability and the opportunity to worship today together. So thank you so much for being here. If you'd like to support the ministries at OFC NAS, um, you can give online at this time at ofcnas.churchcenter.com. And if you're joining us here for the first time today, we would love it if you would press that new here button and you would write in the comments. Um, and you can even chat personally with a pastor um, and let us know that you're new here today. We would love to follow up with you, get to know you a little bit. And it's our hope that you can sense God's presence and a warm welcome with OFC NAS today as we worship. We're going to take a few moments and we're going to go over a few things that are happening at OFC NAS. And I would encourage you, do not tune out. Listen up for things that are happening so you can know what is going on. First off, we want to thank everyone who came out for our work day for Nativity um, on Saturday. Uh, we have one more work day to go. Um, and so we would love, we need to finish strong. We would love everyone's help at that last work day. Um, we're meeting at 9 a.m. at the barn um, on Saturday. And so we would love for your help with that. We also want to let you know that invitations to our drive through live nativity are at the church office. Or if you also want to invite your friends on Facebook, we've made a Facebook event. Um, so you can invite your neighbors, your friends, your family um, to join us on December 18, 19, and 20th from 6 to 8 o'clock. It's going to be a great time. Our women's and children's ministry have joined together to organize the first annual OFC NAS Gingerbread House contest. Doesn't that sound exciting? This is a great way for our online viewers to participate in our church. So whether you're in Mississippi or Florida or Montana, um, this is a great way for everyone to participate in something fun at OFC NAS. Um, if you'd like to enter, you can go to our website, ofcnas.com slash gingerbread, and um, that will have all the details for you. And we have till December 20th to enter your gingerbread house. So, may the best house win. And winners will be announced at our virtual Christmas Eve service. And speaking of our virtual Christmas Eve service, we're going to be gathering online at 7 o'clock on Christmas Eve, which is December 24th, if you didn't know, um, to celebrate the coming of our Lord Jesus. We would love for this to be a special time that we can set aside for the whole family to gather and join together in worshiping and remembering why we're celebrating this season in the first place. We're going to sing Christmas carols. We're going to do some special songs, some special music, um, and it's going to be a great time. We would love for you to be there again December 24th at 7 p.m. And that's all this week's announcements. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message our church's Facebook page. And we're going to get started with some singing. And before we do that, I want you guys um, who are joining us online to take a moment and click that button that says you are excited to worship today. And if you're joining us at, that dry, at our drive-in um, on Saturdays, then we would love for you to honk your horn in preparation and excitement of worship today. Um, let's gather together and let's worship. Well, hello, church. Uh, welcome to our, our Saturday night or Sunday morning uh, service, whenever or wherever you find yourselves this morning or this evening. We are glad you are here with us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open up worship with a word of prayer, so uh, let's pray really quickly. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this time and this opportunity. And, and Father, we just pray that as we begin to open up our hearts, as we begin to uh, open up our voices and sing and give you praise, God, we just ask that you would enter this place that you would be in our hearts, you would be in our cars, you would be in our homes, uh, wherever we are, uh, you would be with us, and your presence would be near, and we would just draw closer and closer to you. So Father, you are so worthy of our praise, and, and we're going to take the next hour and, and give you our praise, and, and uh, we just invite you here this morning. So in your name we pray, amen. So this morning we're going to go ahead and start with a, a good Christmas song. We're going to sing the first Noel, so if you'll sing with me. first Noel the angels did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay 
in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep no Shining in the east Beyond them far And to the earth It gave great light And so it continued Both day and night Sing Noel Till I met you 
I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you Alright, you know what to do, shout it out You call my name out of that grave out of the darkness to your glorious day you called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness to your glorious day Sing verse 3, now your mercy, now your mercy has saved my soul, now your freedom is all that I know, we all made new, Jesus when I met you. Together, I needed, I needed rescue. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have the my eyes are open Cause when you call my name And I ran out of that place Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name darkness to your glorious day Sing the song, We Are Hungry. And Lord, I want more of you. Living water rain down on me. Lord, I need more of you. Living breath of life, come fill me up. Sing that first verse again, Lord, I want. Lord, I want more of you. Living water rain down on me. Lord, I need more of you. 
living breath of life come fill me up we are hungry we are hungry we are hungry for more of you we are thirsty oh jesus we are thirsty for more of you Lord, I want more of you. Holy Spirit, rain down on me. Lord, I need more of you. Living breath of life, come fill me up. But sing that chorus. We are hungry. We are hungry. We are hungry for more of you we are thirsty oh jesus we are thirsty for more of you let's sing that verse together we lift we lift our holy hands up we want to touch you we lift our voices higher 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 to you we lift our holy hands up we want to touch you we lift our voices higher 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 to you it's in the chorus we are hungry we are hungry we are hungry for more of you we are thirsty oh jesus we are thirsty for more of you lift our voices one more time. Let's sing that chorus together. We are hungry. We are hungry. We are hungry. We are hungry for more of you. We are thirsty. Oh Jesus. We are thirsty for more of you. We're going to move into a time of prayer. And as I was considering what I would wanted to share about, um, I've been thinking about this time of year and how we have so many special Christmas songs that come along with this time of year, right? Um, some of them bring us joy. Some of us cause us to be filled with hope. And there are so many beautiful songs that are tied in with this season. And one of the songs that has been on my heart recently um, is the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And the words that are, um, that are in this song are so meaningful. And songs have such meaning, don't they? Sometimes they bring about a special thought, a special memory. And sometimes they put to words, um, put to music, the words that are in our heart. And sometimes the things that we can't necessarily explain or say, but a song does that so well. And the words um, from O Come, O Come, Emmanuel that stood out to me are the parts that say, Bid envy, strife, and quarrels cease. Fill the world with heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. And the word Emmanuel means God with us. So as I was imagining that, I was thinking about that, God with us. And I was just thinking about the fact that we need him now more than ever, don't we? We need him to give us his peace. We need him to give us his comfort. And we need him to give us 
the hope that he can give us. So I want to take some time this morning and this evening and pray for those that we know in our lives who need his hope, who need his comfort, and who need his peace. And I want to also take some time to pray for the places in our lives where we need his peace and hope and comfort. So let's take some time and let's pray for those things. God, we come to you knowing that our world needs you now more than ever. God, we needed you 2,000 years ago when you came as a small baby, and we need you just as much today. And Lord, we bring before you and we confess that sometimes we just try and do this life on our own, on our own but Lord, we need you right now, God. God, would you make us vessels of your peace and your comfort and your hope here on earth. Would we be, as Jesus was, God, a light into this dark world? O come, O come, Emmanuel. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have requests and would like to pray specifically with a pastor, um, and you're joining us online, you can go ahead and press that, um, that button that says Request Prayer, and that will connect you to a special chat with a pastor individually. So if you'd like to do that as well, now is a good time to do that. Let's continue in our worship this morning. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Light of the world, you step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Sing that chorus So here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that you're my God you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all things, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created All for love's sake he came for So here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that you're my God you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Sing that bridge. No, never know how much it cost to see 
my sin upon that cross I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon let's sing that again I'll never I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon one more time I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Yes, Father, we just thank you, God. We thank you that. That no matter what goes on, God, in this world, no matter what we're going through, we can always come to you. We can always lift up our hearts to you. We can lift up our voices in praise. And no matter where we are, no matter where we find ourselves, and no matter what time of year, what time of day, you always show up. We thank you that you are an ever-present God. You are a God who has continued to be faithful since the beginning of time. And so, Father, this morning, we just continue to give you our praise. As we go through your scripture, as, as we try to just be more like you, God, we would just continue to, to lift up your name, that our praises would be just on the tip of our lips, God. We would just be constantly giving you the love and the praise that you deserve, Father. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we will forever sing, forever praise, and in your name we pray. Amen. Aaron, thank you so much for uh, your, your playing, and thank you, team, for, for all you're doing here. Uh, today, uh, we want to continue on in our series called uh, Traveling Light. Today, we're going to be talking about letting go, letting go of control. If you've been with us uh, last week, we started this new series, Traveling Light, and it's not really about traveling during the series, but it's actually about traveling through life and preparing our hearts for Christ and what Christ is doing and, and the fact that Christ is coming back. And so as we prepare for Christ, we want to begin to get our lives ready. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to begin to let go of the things that we need to let go of. We need to be focused on the things that we need to be focused on. Today, we're going to be talking about letting go of control. Now, we're a participatory church, and, you know, to be honest, church is no fun without you, and sometimes it's hard to stand up here and record with a camera. And so I want to ask you a question, and, and no one else will know. There'll be a little hand that pops up if you're in our church online stream. A little hand will come up. You can click that, and no one will even know if you're on Facebook or YouTube. If you can just say, that's me, uh, that would be great. People will know that's you, though. Uh, but... I'm curious how many of you would say honestly that there is one area of your life, some of you there are more areas, but that there's at least one area in your life that you love to control, right? If, if you're thinking about raising your hand, or maybe you're thinking about raising the hand of the person who's next to you, uh, this sermon might be for you. I remember when I was in college, and some of our friends decided we were going to go skydiving and we were just going to go jump out of a plane. So we, we made some, some checks and we found the cheapest place that we could go up and, and jump. And uh, we walk out there and 
we begin to, to get ready and we're talking. And if you've ever been skydiving, you know that the first time you jump is, is a jump called in tandem, right? You're, you're, you're jumping tandem with someone. So what is happening is someone has clipped into you. You're, you don't have a parachute on at all, but you're tied into someone who does have a parachute. And as you're, you're falling, as you're going, when they pull the chute, they stop you as well. Well, we, we got in the plane and it was a little different because the door slid open and, and there are multiple signs in the plane that says do not use without seats. But if you look, there are absolutely no seats in this plane. And remember, this is the cheapest place you can go skydiving at. We get in and there's so many of us, we've kind of overpacked the plane. There's so many of us that my feet are hanging out of the door because there were too many to be able to close the door. So I'm holding on feet hanging out the door as the plane is taking off. Granted, I'm not tied into anyone yet. There's no parachute on my back. I'm just hanging out of a flying airplane. We, we get up to our cruising altitude. The guy sits down behind me, clips in, and we scoot to the front of the plane. And he, he asks me a question. He says, are you ready? I said, I, I, I think I'm ready. I, I'm the first one out of the plane, and I'm looking and you see the tell right there, and you're thinking, okay, am I actually going to fall far enough to miss the, the things that are, are right next to us? And as we're, he goes, are you sure you're ready? And I'm, I said, oh, I, I think I am. He says, I'm going to count to three. And then he threw himself out of the plane with me on him. Right? There was no count. That I wasn't in control of anything. I'm now just falling through the sky hoping that the man who's attached behind me is going to pull the cord. I like being in control. I think this sermon isn't just for you. It's for me. It's for everyone that's hearing. This sermon, the the passage uh, we're going to be talking about, is is found in Luke 1. And we're going to start in verse 26. And we're going to read a large chunk of Scripture. But I... This is another person in life who is out of control. And this is what the Word of the Lord says. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of the King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Uh, Everyone, just real quick, say confused and disturbed. Because I think some of us in our lives might be a little confused and disturbed right now. We might be looking around in our world and saying, why is all of this happening? What what is going on? I wish things were different. I don't understand. God, I just wish you would sweep in and fix this whole mess. I, I'm trying to figure out, but I'm not sure. I never thought I would be here. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it's getting ready for the Christmas season, but remembering that one of your family members has passed away this year. Maybe it's, maybe it's a, a job loss. Maybe it's relational problems. Maybe it's problems with your marriage. Maybe it's an addiction that is, has cropped up. And you're saying, I don't, I don't know. I, I never thought I would find myself here. I thought I was doing so well. I thought I was functioning. I thought I was moving in the right directions. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Verse 30, Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel to- told her, for you have been found For you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. And he will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of the of God. You know, here in Mary's life, Mary could look at this angel and say, you know, uh, I, I understand all this, but, but can I just say, this isn't really convenient for me. 
right? Being pregnant now kind of changes the way everyone else will look at me. It changes the way society will think about me. It changes the way I will be with, with my husband-to-be, right? It changes every single moment. It, it's just really not a good look for me. It, it's, it's not what I wanted. It's, it's not what I have planned for my life. This really doesn't work for me. But those are not the words that Mary says. Mary says, in verse 38, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. I I really like the way uh, the ESV puts it. It says this, Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, and then she quotes the Beatles, let it be. Let it be to me according to your words. Many might be thinking that this is the perfect message. We're talking about control. This is the perfect message for my spouse or my father-in-law or my mother-in-law or my mom or dad or for my children. This is the perfect message for them because I want them to know that they're not in control. And you might say to yourself, because I've said it, I'm, I'm not controlling. I'm just aggressively helpful, right? I'm aggressively helpful. Hey, you, you just don't want my help, but I want to help you. Or, you know, I'm, I'm just thoroughly organized. I just know exactly what you should be doing all the time. And trust me, I'm not controlling. I'm just going to organize your life for you because it will be so much better. Some of us can be so wound tight that we make coffee nervous. We want to, to be involved in all kinds of things. Uh, I, I think of, you know, our kids. We want to tell them what to wear, what, what to do with their hair. We want to make their, their choices. We want to make sure they get great grades in school. We want to make it through everything. We want to even take the uh, ACT for them, get them into a major college. We want to pick out their spouse. And man, when, when we pick out their spouse, we want to pick out the rest of their lives. The, the thing is, we're not in control of other people's lives. There comes a point when everyone has to live the life before them for themselves. Control doesn't just mean controlling other people's lives, though. Control can also be controlling our own image, what what people think about us, right? This means social media becomes our best friend because we get to give them whatever life we want them to see. We, We get to filter it through the edits and the filters and You know, it takes 43 attempts to take our Christmas picture, and by the end of it, we want to give one of our kids away and get a divorce because the experience has been so terrible. Family photos can be crazy sometimes. Have you ever taken a family photo with a young baby that you begin to try to corral and control, and then they begin to scream? And then it's the best picture in the world because everyone else has this plastered fake smile because they can hear the crying baby that's sitting right next to them. Everyone has this plastic, plastic except for the baby who is really showing what's happening in the scenario. Some of us like control. I do. Uh, I don't just like control. Uh, I Even in situations where I'm not in control, I want to know exactly what I'm getting into so at least I can control the small little space around me. Sometimes we, we fear losing control. So we can try to control it even more. And the more we're afraid, the more we try to control. And the more we try to control, the more things get out of control. So the more we become afraid that things are going to get out of control, so we begin to try to control it even more and hold on even tighter. And the tighter we hold, sometimes it feels like the more it slips through our fingers. So I want to tell you something. If you get nothing else out of this sermon, I want you to hear this. You don't always have the power to control but you always have the power to surrender. Now, some of you might be thinking, that doesn't sound like a good thing. I don't like the word surrender. Surrender sounds like I'm giving up. I'm, I'm giving in. I'm, I'm giving up for the other side to have the power. But, but listen to it one more time. You don't always have the power 
to control the environment, the surroundings. You don't always have the power to control what other people do, but you do always have the power to surrender those things to God. Today, our our passage is Mary. And Mary has to give up her control and surrender to God. And some of you might be saying, ah, that's easy for Mary. Mary was the mother of Jesus. Mary was chosen specifically. Mary was special. Mary has statues made after her. She has cathedrals and and churches that have been named after her. Mary was just so grounded and wise and important and wonderful and perfect. Sometimes we forget that Mary was somewhere between 13 to 15. She was a, a young girl with hopes and dreams, fears, and pressures, just like any other young girl, 13 to 15. She had a a pressure to to marry and to marry well. You know, uh, she didn't have today's ability to to go on and and travel all kinds of places to find a husband. There was no eHarmony or Match.com or Christian Mingle or Snapchat or or whatever. There was no way to find a spouse in those ways. So to, to create a meaningful future for herself, she was dependent on a husband. That's what happened in these days, that that the the spouse, the wife was dependent on marrying well to be taken care of. And just like any other girl, 13 to 15, I'm sure she had just a few basic qualities she was looking for. Just a a few lists of non-negotiables, just a few things that she wanted. She wanted someone strong and handsome, charming, who, who drove a nice donkey, a new model, not an old one with a bowed back, but a new model that, that could walk for a long time, who had a, a good job and a bright future with strong hands and a soft heart. He was close to his mom, but, but he wasn't a mama's boy, right? He was bold yet humble, decisive yet flexible. He was well-groomed, but he wasn't over-arrogant with his clothes. He was fit, but not obsessed with taking his shirt off and taking shirtless selfies. He had big goals, yet he was easygoing. Maybe I added a few of those non-negotiables to Mary's list. Probably she didn't have those, but put yourself in the shoes of a 13 to 15-year-old girl. She's thinking about the one she's going to marry. She's she's already engaged. Papers have already been signed. She, for lack of a better word, is married to this man. And yet, she gets this news. An angel appears to her and says, Mary, you're pregnant. You're you're carrying the, the baby of God. And she's disturbed and confused. This wasn't what she wanted. This wasn't what she expected. In fact, this is the exact opposite. She's marrying a man who loves God and and follows the law and is upright. And she knows, she knows that this is probably going to break him. I think some of us might be able to understand that. That they're confused and disturbed by what is going on in the world around us, that, that we're frustrated that we're not in control. But the amazing thing is, like Mary, the story doesn't end here. And, and the big thing is, like Mary, we don't know the end of the story. Mary doesn't know the end of the story. Mary doesn't know what's going to happen in the situation. She doesn't see anything. Her mind is probably flashing forward to to Joseph calling off the wedding and getting the the, the deposit back on the honeymoon and dumping her and in that culture getting a divorce. And Mary has to make the choice that she can't see the end to say, okay God, let it be. She either gets to decide her plans 
or God's purpose, her dreams or God's destiny, her desire for control or God's calling on her life. Even though she doesn't understand the plan, she chooses to trust God and that, that God has a purpose for all of this. And so she says, let it be. Oh, let it be. Let it be done unto me. What are you trying to control that might be outside of your control today? What, what are we trying to hold on to so hard that our, our fists and knuckles turn white and we get tired of holding on? What, what is it that we are trying to control that we need to surrender to God? I've, I've mentioned a few relationship problems family issues, the loss of a family member, health issues, image, the pursuit of perfection, our kids' futures. Maybe it's even our futures. Mary doesn't know the end of the story. Mary knows right now what God is asking her to do, but doesn't know how it will work out. Because the reality is, you don't always have the power to control. She, she can't control what is going on right now. But she has the power to surrender, and we always have the power to surrender. Even though she does not understand, she trusts, she trusts her father has a purpose. That God is doing something special. So she chooses to surrender. I think this is important because I don't think there is such a thing as a partial surrender. When, when I was I was thinking this week of like military conquests and uh, when, when I think of surrender, a lot of times that's what I think of. There's this, this, there's this faction with two warring sides and one side surrenders. The side that surrenders doesn't get to decide what they surrender and what they don't. They surrender and terms are drawn up and, and that's what happens. When we surrender to God, there's no conditions, there's no strings, there's no clauses. We can't say, you know, God, I'm 87% surrendered to Jesus, but there are just some things in my life that I don't want to give up. I, you know, I'm willing to come to church, but I'm, I'm not willing to, to pay my tithe. I, I'm, I'm willing to come to, to, to church, I'm willing to, to participate. God, I'm willing to accept your salvation, but I don't want to accept the fact that I have to live different and I can't live with my girlfriend. Surrender. When we surrender to Jesus, it's, it's a surrendering. It's not about trusting Him with some things, but holding some things back. God, I, I forgive what you can, uh, I, I believe you can forgive what I've done in my past, but I still want to control my future. Hear this. I'm preaching to me today as well. Because I believe the desire to control is rooted in a lack of faith in God. When we overestimate our own ability to control, I believe we always underestimate the power of God. Everything in culture invites us to live contrary to the gospel. It invites us to, to take charge, to control our own destiny, to make it happen, to move forward. And yet, Luke 9, 24 and 25 says this, For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What, is, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit the very, their very self? To follow Jesus literally means to surrender your control to him. To say, okay, God, I recognize that I can't do it. I recognize that I can't save myself. God, save me. And then as, as God saves us, well, then we begin to, to move forward and say, okay, God, I need you to help direct my path. The bad news with surrender is it's not a one-time event. It's a daily choice. It's a daily choice to surrender our will to him. Imagine Mary. Right, let's, let's look at Mary's life when she surrenders to God. All the way through life, these amazing things happen. Mary says, okay, God, let it be. Uh, Gabriel, let it be as you have said. 
unto me. Let, let me become the bearer of Jesus. Knowing what this means for her relationship. And yet God, without telling her, God sends another angel to Joseph to say, hey, you know, I, I know you're wanting to, to divorce her now that you've heard this, but, but let me tell you this. Don't. Because that's, that's a baby that is God. Fully God and fully human. And so, in that instance of life, God takes care in a way that Mary probably never would have expected. Things begin to get a little harsh. Mary begins to show. And so, what, the, what does the family do? Well, they send Mary off to their cousin. Because it was unseemly for a woman to be pregnant out of wedlock. She gets to Elizabeth's house and God has gone before her and Elizabeth recognizes the baby that jumps within Mary's womb and begins to proclaim her blessed by God. Further in, in their life, Jesus is missing. Jesus, the one that Mary and Joseph have given to Jesus. Jesus is missing. They've gone out and they're, they're now back at the, uh, on the road going home and they recognize that Jesus isn't with the family. So they have to run back to Jerusalem and find Jesus teaching. And he says, didn't you know I would be about my father's business? Maybe if we just jump back just a little bit. Mary... Right, she's, a, she's about to give birth. Her and her husband have made this long trek to Jerusalem. And, and when they get there, she's pregnant and she's going into labor and there's no place for her to stay. There's no place for her to be. There's nothing. And then God provides a stall for this baby to be born. And he's, he's wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. And shepherds show up. To praise the living God. Herod gets news. And they hear that they're going to have to run because Herod wants to kill all of the babies. Well, if you're, if you're going to run, there's something that has to happen. Someone has to pay the bill. You can't work. You can't do those things. You just have to flee. Well, God amazingly provided for that trip. Right? These wise men come with gifts. I wonder how far gold gets you when you're on the run. Jesus is in the garden at the end of his life. And he's kneeling there. And according to science, the capillaries burst and he's, he's now has blood coming out of sweat on his brow. And he's laying there in, in this agony and in, in this frustration and this hurt and he prays this prayer. Father, if there's any way that this cup can be removed from me, anything that can happen for me not to go to the cross, Lord, let it happen. But then he says the exact same word in the Greek that his mom said. Let it be your will, not mine. All the way through Jesus' life, through Mary's surrender, we see God moving. Because we don't always have the power to control, but we always have the power to surrender. We always have the power to surrender. We always have the power to rely on Him. And when we surrender, when we surrender, we get to see the amazing effects of God's power. Because when we're in control, a lot of times we overestimate the control we can have. And we underestimate the power of God. But when we surrender, we get to witness God's moving through the world. Mary gets to experience the life and love of a son and of a Savior. Here's my promise to you. 
We've talked a lot about control. And maybe some of you still don't know if you want to let go. Maybe some of you still don't know if you can trust. Maybe some of you are afraid. Here's here's something that I think is really, really important. And a promise that God can do more through our weakness than in our strength. God can do way more with our surrender than I could ever do with my control. That which is on our hearts, that which burdens us and we we carry, that which, which is weighing us down on our hearts, is so much better in His hands. I can't control you. Uh, we, we don't get to even fully control the church, right? Uh, it, we're, we're a family that's working together. So Chelsea and I have given this church to God. And I want to say, I believe God is doing something in our midst right now. I, I might even hazard the guess to say God is doing something in your life right now. So what I do is, what me and Chelsea both do is we preach. We set the table. We prepare the feast. We, we allow God to move and then we trust that God is moving in your lives and that you will feast upon the feast that is before us. Because we don't always have the power to control. But we always have the power to surrender. Maybe there's something today that you desperately need to surrender. Something that you need to give to God. If that's the case, I pray that right now you will surrender it. If you're with us on Church Online, if you click that prayer request button, it will take you to a pastor. and They can pray with you and they can help you and they can keep you accountable for it. No one else will see it. No one else will be able to know it. But we will be able to follow up with you and help you Because that's what we do as a family. We help each other. And we surrender together to watch what God is about to do. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray today, as we sing, that you will touch lives, that you will change lives, and that you will prepare our lives for what you are doing in this world. Lord, I I pray that you will come that you will come quickly. And while we wait, may we surrender to you and give you control over all all our lives. In Jesus' name. Heart and mind, 
bit and he strife and quarrel cease. Fill the world with heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to the Sing rejoice, 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 Emmanuel shall come to me, O Israel. Thanks so much for joining us for our service. I hope you enjoyed the worship music. I hope you enjoyed the sermon. If you feel called to do something this week, if you feel called to give up some control, I want to encourage you to do that and, and to take the next steps. The staff here at OFC NAS want nothing more than to help you through that. So if you contact us both on Church Online or even through our email or the church office, we want to work through some of these steps to help you release some of that control. And if you enjoyed the service and you want to participate in ministry, we would love for you to give the gift of giving for you to begin to grow that generosity in you. So if you would like to give to to help our ministry continue to reach out and reach others. Uh, if you hit that give button, if you give online, or you can even bring your offering in throughout the week. But our desire is to really grow together, and part of that growth comes through giving. Uh, let's pray one more time, and then I will say goodbye. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this offering, thank you for the service, and thank you for these people. Lord, I pray that you will bless this day as they go on and they go out, Father, may they be your hands and your feet today. And Father, Lord, whatever control that they have bound up, that they're trying to hold on to as it slips through their fingers, Lord, I pray that they will surrender that to you and give it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go with the grace of God.